This five-week milestone could be another stage where identical twins develop key differences before they're even born. Celso and Jesus Cardenas are identical twins who were raised together. They remained physically similar as they grew up, but their tastes and interests began to diverge. Celso became interested in dance and academia, while Jesus preferred sports. The most surprising difference between the two brothers is that Celso, wearing black, is gay. The differing sexual orientation of identical twins allows us to investigate one of science's most controversial questions. Are people born gay? Celso and Jesus were raised by the same parents in the same household. So, they shared the same environment at a crucial time in their personal development. In the general population, the chance of someone being gay is less than 5%. Unless you have a gay twin. Then the chances are much higher. If you are fraternal, sharing half your genes, there's nearly a 25% chance that you will also be gay. If you are identical, sharing all your genes, there's about a 50% chance you will also be gay. This suggests that there must be some genetic component to our sexuality. But it can't all be up to genes. Otherwise, every identical pair would either be both gay or both straight. Some other factor must be at play. In their first few weeks, all fetuses develop along similar lines. If nothing changed, each one of us would be born female. Fetuses with the male Y chromosome will form testes at about week six that produce the hormone testosterone. But at about the eighth week, the testosterone is released and may affect early brain development. Testosterone masculinizes the body. It also masculinizes the brain, including the hypothalamus, which partially controls who we find sexually attractive. Some scientists believe that the more the hypothalamus is exposed to testosterone, the more it sets the stage for a sexual inclination toward women. Occasionally, a male fetus doesn't produce sufficient testosterone, or its brain doesn't absorb enough to shape it along heterosexual lines. If this theory is correct, then it may be that Celso absorbed enough testosterone to masculinize his body, but not enough to fully differentiate his brain. As a result, he was left with a desire for men. Many mysteries remain, but twins like Celso and Jesus play a crucial role in informing scientists about how and when sexuality develops. Epigenetics reveals that even if their DNA code is the same, the way it functions can differ. The human genome contains around 25,000 genes, each with its own specific function, like producing energy or directing cell division. Now, geneticists are investigating a previously unknown aspect of the genome called the epigenome. A series of chemicals that act like switches are capable of activating or deactivating individual genes. One of these switches works by a process called DNA methylation. Enzymes inside a cell 
attach a minuscule molecular compound, a methyl group, to a gene. This compound can deactivate or at times activate the gene, but the gene itself remains. The cell's DNA profile is unchanged. The activation and deactivation of genes during early development could explain many twists of fate that affect us all. Why one person is struck by disease and another is spared. Epigenetics may also play a significant role in determining sexuality. If sexual preference is associated with an unidentified gene, it may be that the epigenetic suppression or activation of this gene dictates sexual preference. These genetic switches may be the answer to why one twin absorbs more testosterone than the other, resulting in one being gay and the other straight. It's becoming clear that our health, personality, tastes, and even appearance aren't the product of our genes or our environment, but that nature and nurture are inextricably bound, with epigenetics the biological link between the two.